Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. We're taking a look back at the case of a bodybuilding power couple who went from being celebrities pictured on magazine covers to being photographed for their mugshots. They were accused of killing a professional dancer who also worked as their live in personal assistant. We covered the murder of Melissa James in 2016. And since then, there have been some updates. This is one of those cases where a love triangle ends in murder in Las Vegas. Convicted were professional bodybuilder Craig Titus, who had competed for Mr. Olympia, and his wife, fitness expert Kelly Ryan, who is best known as Flying Ryan for her acrobatics. Before Kelly and Craig were scheduled to go on trial, the two of them cut deals. Craig pleaded guilty to second degree murder and remains incarcerated. Kelly Ryan, on the other hand, took a plea on battery with a deadly weapon and she's done her time. She was released on parole in 2017. Let's take a look back at the case that sent shockwaves through Las Vegas, the fitness world and beyond. Craig Titus and Kelly Ryan are two stars who sparkled on the Las Vegas Strip, the all-American couple. But a dark secret behind their picture-perfect marriage of money, muscle, and health would bring their empire tumbling down. A fireball cracks the pitch-black night in the deserted desert just outside of Las Vegas. A Jaguar is torched. The license plate is registered to a famous bodybuilder, Kelly Ryan. And there's a charred body in the trunk. It appeared as though from the beginning, even with the body being severely damaged, that we were dealing with the female. So we expected it to be Kelly Ryan. Kelly Ryan is known to the fitness world as Flying Ryan at one time holding the Miss Fitness America title. Her dazzling routines, wowing crowds and landing endorsement deals around the world. Her routines were full of life. She could fly across the stage. She always had a big smile on her face. And she just had an aura about her that stood out. She was a star from the beginning, from the first time I ever saw her. Denise Dinger, also a professional bodybuilder and friend to Kelly, says she was the it girl. They spent countless hours in the gym building muscle and dreams of marketing Dinger's health bar company with Kelly's famous face. There were other competitors, but they didn't flip like Kelly did. She was just known to fly across the stage. Her magic on the mat also caught the eye of the famed bad boy of bodybuilding, Craig Titus. What was their reputation like as a couple? Power couple. <laughs> they just had an aura about them both. She was beautiful. Kelly was absolutely beautiful and her body was stunning. And Craig had a, a, an energy. Titus held his own catalog of titles, including Iron Man and Mr. Olympia. In order to be on 100 covers and to be in, a, to be in the Olympia, you should be getting some respect. Kelly the Animal Ryan Titus. As the couple's passion for each other grew, so did their careers, gracing several magazine covers and fitness exposés together. Go the legs the again. Let's see your Let's go, get it up. Up, 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 push. From the outside, it looked like they were the perfect power couple. But behind the bleached white smiles, there were dark secrets that could affect their carefully sculpted reputations. Did those secrets all blow up in their faces that dark night in the middle of the desert? Based on the information we had out at the scene, that the person we had in the trunk was Kelly. When cops showed up at the couple's Las Vegas home, they were shocked. Kelly Ryan opens the door alive and well. In fact, she doesn't even seem bothered when cops tell her about her torch Jaguar with a body in the back. Instead, she's fuming about an argument she and Craig had with their live-in assistant, Melissa James. They tell police Melissa's been stealing from them, and now she's mysteriously disappeared. She had been there and living with them for quite some time, and now they've found out that not only is the car missing, it's been burned, and that, that Melissa's most likely the person in the trunk. You would expect their reaction to be different. Melissa James is a professional dancer, a trained ballet, hip-hop, and jazz instructor who grew up on a stage. 
She opened her own dance studio in Florida when she was just 19 years old. She loved to dance. That's all she wanted to do all her life. But Melissa's mom says the light in her bright blue-eyed girl dimmed after a bad business deal put her dance studio in jeopardy. That's when she met Craig Titus at a fitness competition. There was an instant connection and he persuaded her to move to Las Vegas. He kind of painted a picture of she could have a better career if she went there with the dance and she, she believed it. Melissa hoped to hit the jackpot in Vegas. She thought working with the super couple of bodybuilding could put her on the fast track to fame and fortune, at least help her earn enough money to get her dance studio back. Melissa was all in and actually moved in with Craig and Kelly, her new best friends. I think she liked just the glamour of Las Vegas and as a young person, you know, why not? But the high life was short-lived for Melissa. She told her mom promises were broken. She was never paid, and Craig and Kelly were often in a drug-fueled state of paranoia. She was telling me that Kelly was um, on some kind of drug, and she said she was really scared in the house. We have an extraordinary amount of evidence that drugs were being used in the house. We probably had, I don't, we never counted them individually, but over 2,000 needles. Life is good at the present time. Craig is a master manipulator. Assistant District Attorney Robert Dasquez says, according to Craig, he and Melissa were more than just friends. They had a brief romantic relationship at some point. When Kelly found out, it was an image she couldn't shake. Undoubtedly, if, if you're Kelly Ryan and you're living with a woman who you believe had an intimate relationship with your husband, that's a recipe for disaster. Morris says after living just four months with the couple, her daughter was ready to pack up and go. She just said that she was accusing her of stealing. And she said that really upset her because she said, you know, I consider us as friends. Titus booked Melissa a flight home for Christmas. She told her mom she was done with Vegas and was leaving Sin City for good. Hours before her flight, tensions reached a boiling point. Detective O'Kelly says Melissa flexed her muscle, threatening to expose the power couple. I'm sure, absolutely sure that Melissa was, you guys are ruined, I'm going to the police, I'm not gonna be quiet about this, they're getting ready to open up a clothing store, they've got contracts with all these different muscle additives, and she had the potential of ruining them. Melissa James was quitting and leaving the bright lights of Las Vegas forever. Titus bought her a one-way ticket, and she was heading home to see her mom in Florida. Tragically, she never made it. Melissa's mom anxiously waited for days until she received a call from the Las Vegas coroner. That was just the beginning of a nightmare, because I knew when I got that call, I knew that something happened. Only I thought something happened to all three of them. Moore James' beautiful daughter was the charred body found in the back of Kelly Ryan's torch Jaguar. Mora knew Melissa was unhappy, but never suspected she'd be in danger. She was on the phone with me constantly upset because this is, you know, things are not as they said it was going to be, and I can't do this, and I want to have my own place, I don't want to live here. The home she desperately wanted to leave behind became a haunting crime scene for detectives. Melissa was found in that trunk in the middle of the desert, but her horror started here, inside Craig Titus and Kelly Ryan's home. Police say it began with Kelly zapping Melissa with a taser gun and using this kind of ticker tape from the gun itself. Cops claim they were able to trace each time the taser was used. We knew the exact moment in time that the taser was fired five times. That time matched up with the time that Craig Titus was on his cell phone. So we believe that Craig Titus was in another room, not with Melissa and Kelly. O'Kelly says after enduring 50,000 volts of electricity, tiny Melissa had to fight off Titus, 242 pounds of pure muscle in a violent rage. 
There was a bathrobe tie that was around her neck. There was also a speaker wire that was wrapped around her neck as well. At autopsy, there was evidence of strangulation possibly being involved. Even with the extensive burning, the, the medical examiner was able to say that. We also had from above her eyebrows to below her lower lip, her entire head was encircled with duct tape. The coroner's report also reveals a toxic level of morphine injected into Melissa's leg. Titus and Ryan tell cops they did not kill Melissa, claiming she injected herself, causing a fatal overdose. Assistant District Attorney Robert Dasquez says it's one of many lies the couple told trying to create an alibi. That was version number two when Kelly and Craig claimed that Melissa died from an overdose in their car in their garage. And they thought their two friends would support that. But when they were interviewed, the friends by detectives, they said, we never saw any such thing. Instead, police claim those friends say a panicked Craig called them in the middle of the night, claiming they found Melissa dead. Craig then handed them a mysterious duffel bag. Eventually, they looked inside the duffel bag. They were curious. And there was a taser gun, a stun gun, and some other things. Police say Titus then called on another friend, this guy, Anthony Gross, to help him get rid of Melissa's body. I think like a lot of other people in this case, you know, Anthony was a little bit starstruck by Craig Titus. And Craig used that to his advantage to manipulate Anthony Gross, to convince him to follow him to the desert and then give him a ride back after he lit the car with Melissa's body in the trunk on fire. On this surveillance video, you can see Gross walking into a convenience store at 3.40 in the morning, just a few miles away from where the Jaguar was torched in the desert. At about the same time, not far away, this video inside a Walmart shows Kelly, right here, using her credit card to buy seven bottles of lighter fluid. Outside, Craig pulls the Jaguar up front. He helps Kelly load the lighter fluid in the back seat because detectives say Melissa's body was already in the trunk. After the Jag was torched, O'Kelly says in their mad dash to escape, Anthony Gross left a key piece of evidence behind. It was a clean flashlight that was sitting here on the, on the uh, side of the road uh, to the rear or to the north of where the Jaguar was located. That became significant later when we were able to find out that Anthony Gross was involved Detectives checked his credit card and found Gross had just purchased the same make of flashlight. That was enough to haul Gross in for questioning. But when cops went back to Craig and Kelly, they were gone. We found that Craig had traded in his truck for a brand new Viper truck, so it didn't match the vehicle description that we knew he had. And then the two of them took off across country. They took money that they had in the house, secreted in little fake, you know, canisters. A nationwide manhunt is launched, the FBI is called in, and then detectives get a tip and track the power couple to an area just outside of Boston. SWAT officers are seen on security video moving in and arresting Kelly in a beauty salon where she was getting her nails done. Craig was arrested a few blocks away. Their capture sent shockwaves through the bodybuilding community. Devastation. You don't even know the industry. I mean, it was like devastating. Everybody just could not believe what we were hearing. Whoa. Even behind bars, the muscle stars keep making headlines. While Craig Titus is in the Clark County Detention Center, someone tips off guards about a possible jailbreak. I don't understand what you want to do. I'll talk. We'll talk to you when we get downstairs. This video from inside the jail shows guards aren't taking any chances with such a powerful prisoner strapping Craig into a chair like Hannibal Lecter oh to transfer him to another pod. Even though Craig and Kelly are behind bars, their killing spree may not be over. Ron Brady always wanted to be a bodybuilder and idolized Craig Titus. Brady met his idol in jail and says he was easily lured in when Titus confided in him about the murder of Melissa James. The former man of muscle, claiming he was innocent and he wanted Brady to help him prove it, 
by silencing key witnesses. Did Craig Titus ever ask you for help with his case? He had asked me to help expose the wrongdoings of these people that were trying to testify against him, but never to try and have them harmed in any way. Ron Brady claims he was stunned. Here is Craig Titus, one of his heroes, now pleading for his help. I don't know where my mind was at at that time. I just figured after Craig had told me the situation and he was crying, he was actually crying to me. Ron Brady speaking here for the very first time, confesses he wanted to help Titus beat the murder rap. Soon after his conversation with Craig, Brady claims he was approached by another inmate. This man, Dame Kasem, and he claims that's the first time he heard any talk of getting rid of witnesses. He had introduced himself to me and told me that he had people out on the streets that would persuade these people not to testify with the promise of money on the back end after Titus was released from jail. That's not what Kasem tells us. He, Kasem told us that Ron had heard that Kasem had some contacts with people that were connected to the mob or organized crime and that Ron Brady approached him. Dean Kasem was in jail charged with robbing a big time poker player. He wasn't a US citizen, so he stood the risk of being deported. What Ron Brady didn't know is he is a longtime informant who was working for the cops. Kasem had a lot to gain by being a snitch a lighter sentence, maybe even his freedom. Brady was released from the detention center after charges against him were dropped. Kasem kept calling from jail to make sure he was still working on a hit to wipe out witnesses. This is some of the audio being broadcast for the very first time. I have evidence. Yeah, if you don't have the actual people saying they saw anything anymore, then uh, more than likely it'll probably get tossed out, or at least they get a lower bail. Dean Kasem told me that what we were planning on doing was I, he was gonna have individuals approach these people and relocate them. Police say Craig Titus was desperate to get him and Kelly out of jail. Mr. Muscle thought he had his players in place. Ron Brady is supposed to line up a hitman to silence three of the prosecution's key witnesses. Those three, Anthony Gross, who helped torch the Jack, and Craig's two friends, whom he left holding the duffel bag. What Titus didn't know is Dean Kasem is secretly working with police to foil the murderous plot. Cops say this is jailhouse audio putting the plan to kill in motion. There's a chance that one, two, and three could be together at the same time. Yeah, most all the time. So they, I, didn't even see, I didn't know they knew each other like that, but that'll make a difference. Yeah. That make it, it actually makes it easier. Ron Brady wanted this push forward. On multiple occasions, he was given an opportunity to back out of it and walk away from it. He did, as a matter of fact, didn't do that. He added people to the list of people that they wanted killed. But Brady says he backed out three times in a row on the money drop to a hitman he knew only as Fred. I just figured I didn't want to get involved in something this big. But Brady claims Kasem would not let up from behind bars. He says these audio recordings show Kasem threatened him, you'll finish the job or else. Why are you avoiding my calls, man? Well, not, I'm not, I'm here. I'm waiting. Well, you're just asking for Craig right there, man. I'm not avoiding you. Dude, I'm not you know what? It don't bother me if you are, dude, because I'm, I'm so pissed, man. I'm willing to spend 20 grand for this mother to come see you. No. That's how pissed I am. I know, Dean. I'm telling you, I'm not going to let you down on this. I remember I was a little scared. Even though the word murder was never used, the hundreds of audio recordings filed were enough to arrest Brady. My words, I mean, it came out different, but it was never to murder people. It was for them to go in, grab them, and relocate them. Brady was now facing murder for hire charges. As part of an elaborate sting to nail Ron Brady, police go back to one of those key witnesses in Melissa's murder, Anthony Gross. Cops get Gross to pose for these gruesome pictures and fake his death. Then police confront Brady. At the time we took Ron Brady in custody, we believed that he thought that the murder for hire had taken place. One of the detectives slams this big book down in front of me, opens it up and shows me pictures of somebody that had blood all over him and tied up. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know, what's, what's this? And they were really perplexed. You know, they were like, you just had him killed. I said, what's going on here? I thought it was a joke. 
Brady was locked up and Gross was sent out of state to hide until the trials started. Once behind bars, Ron Brady's father got this call from Craig Titus himself. He's got to be careful because they will send all kinds of people to say really stupid things to him yep. in this place. That's what they do. He didn't do anything to begin with, so exactly. I don't know how they're going to trick him into saying he did something. Well, it's not, it's not so much tricking as it is lying. Yeah. Um, that's why I don't associate with anybody. I kind of keep to myself. Ron Brady was offered a plea deal, but he turned it down. It would have made it look like I was doing something wrong, and I took a deal so I could get out of trouble. He risked it all, and he lost. Brady was convicted on three counts of soliciting murder for hire and spent the last eight years in prison. He was released just a few months ago. Do you think at any point Titus lied or manipulated you? I do, absolutely. Cameras are not allowed in Lovelock Prison where Craig Titus is locked up just outside of Reno, Nevada. But bars can't block his words in the two letters Titus sent to me. Craig claims he got a long prison sentence for second degree murder because of his fame, writing he was a world famous steroid using professional bodybuilder. He denies having anything to do with the murder and goes on to reveal for the first time, I wasn't even present when Melissa died in my home. The women were together after the fight, I was gone. His mother says it's the truth and they claim to have the proof from a private investigator to back it up. They had gotten into it, Kelly and Melissa. Craig has a new attorney and is trying to appeal his conviction. Speaking for the first time and on her son's behalf, his mother, Sandra Hirschman, details what Craig told her happened the night of Melissa's murder. Starting from the knockdown, drag out fight at Craig and Kelly's home, hours before Melissa was to board a flight home to Florida to see her mom. She was tasered by Melissa. There's evidence that uh, Melissa was tasered five times. Ah, no, there's no evidence of that. That's a damn dirty lie. Craig's mom says her son thought his wife had been killed by Melissa. Kelly was like she was dead on the floor after she was tasered, and Craig sobbed like a baby trying to revive her. And that's when he it slammed Melissa. However, this report, along with Melissa's autopsy, show how many times the taser was used. She says Craig told her both ladies were roughed up, but alive when her son walked out to get away from the fighting. He left the house, and when he came back, she was dead with a needle hanging from her, from her thigh. Craig's mom says Kelly was the one who injected Melissa with the fatal dose of morphine. Craig and Kelly then tried to cover it up throwing Melissa's body in the back of Kelly's Jaguar and torching the car in the desert. But when cops busted the couple, Titus accepted a plea deal for murder, kidnapping, and arson. In his letter to me, Craig writes, I signed a deal I never should have signed. I raised my kids too proper, I guess. I raised them too proper. I said, you know what? You promised your grandfather you would not take the rap for her, and you did it anyway, Craig. Why? He said, I loved her, Mother. I didn't want her to hang forever. I said, Jesus Christ, Craig, so you're going to hang forever. Craig got up to 55 years. Kelly cut a plea deal for arson and assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Craig's mom is on a quest to fight what she calls a grave injustice. Her voice quivers at the thought of Kelly walking free as her son sits in prison for at least another decade. I want them to know that my son is innocent and that he took the rap for his wife and she claims to be a Christian and she needs to be a Christian and tell the friggin' truth. She needs to tell the truth that he did not kill her. He wasn't even in the house when she died. And she knows this. She even told this to her family. I want him out of there. I couldn't reach Kelly or her attorney to confirm the claim she was home alone with Melissa when she died. He's such a good boy. He's not a monster like they said. He, he's got a heart of gold. 
Kelly divorced Craig while in prison. She could be paroled next year. If not, she's set to be free, released with time served in 2018. Melissa's mom believes both of the people who played a role in her daughter's death should rot in prison. I really do think they should have had life in prison. I believe they're both equally responsible for what happened to Melissa. Morris says she reaches out to the Nevada Parole Board every time Kelly is up for parole. She sends a picture of her daughter and reminds them of the life taken. The lies continued. The truth, yeah. We'll probably never know the truth. Prosecutor Robert Dasquez says because much of the evidence was destroyed in the fire, the coroner had to rule Melissa's death undetermined. But Dasquez says there's no doubt what happened to her. Not only strong evidence of strangulation, but strong evidence that he and Kelly used a taser on Melissa. Strong evidence that they used a stun gun. Strong evidence that she was body slammed because that came out of Craig's mouth himself. Strong evidence that she was uh, injected with morphine, had her head wrapped with duct tape, and then stuffed in the trunk of a car and burned. So the evidence against Craig Titus was overwhelming. Daska says the common thread for all the lives destroyed in this case is a friendship with Craig Titus. The bodybuilding world, it's almost like this cult following. And this case, more than probably any other, you can see the ripple effect. The damage and devastation that was caused really by Craig Titus. He didn't just take the life of Melissa James along with Kelly, he destroyed other lives.